All right. Excellent. Um, and I, I, I know we have, um, you know, uh, a handful of people on the on the call. Um, you know, if, if you do have questions along the way, um, feel free to ask, um, you know, it, or or wait till the end. Uh, either either way is fine, but um, I'm happy to kind of keep it, you know, conversational uh, as well. Um, so just let me know if you have any any questions. So let's just straight into it. Um, a brief introduction to uh, to celebrate. Oh, let me move this out of the way here. All right. So, I'm sure this is probably a familiar slide. Um, it's probably you know, similar to the conversations you've had with your corporate customers or, or service providers, but there, there's a disconnect between where technology is and where corporations or where businesses are, um, their ability to keep up with, with technology. Um, typically, the way that this life cycle seems to go is that employees will ask for you know, newer and newer devices, and specifically, we're talking about mobile now, but um, you could say the same for, for computers as well, but more, more so with mobile. Um, you know, the, the life cycle is that um, customers will receive newer and newer devices and the either corporate IT security or um, legal team is sort of playing catch up and trying to support, um, you know, these new technologies that, that teams are using. Um, the same goes for uh, even applications as well. So we saw this huge kind of shift away from traditional, you know, email um, switching over to these. Uh, collaboration platforms like Slack and Teams, um, and uh, corporate IT are, are kind of struggling to to keep up and and be able to um, uh, you know collect and preserve uh, and actually use that data. Um, so where Celebrite uh, can come in and assist there is to um, serve as a uh, as a resource to help these customers catch up and stay on top of technology as it as it changes uh, because it is absolutely um, rapidly changing, um, so that's kind of where where we come in. We start bridging that that gap to allow customers to to stay on top of you know the the, the latest and greatest technology that their employees are using and need to do uh, need to use to be competitive. So Celebrite, as as you guys might know, have been in the um, I'll say digital data space for uh, over twenty years now. Um, so we started off um, actually. Uh, creating this uh, machine that would allow you to transfer data from cell phones to other cell phones. Uh, so if you went into like a uh, you know AT and T store, or Verizon store, um, purchased a new phone, um, they would use a Celebrate to connect uh, you know your old device and your new device and transfer all your data over. Um, we have obviously since pivoted far uh, away from that now. Um, to now serve, uh, you know, the law enforcement community, but also uh, the private sector as well uh, over the past 20 years. Um, so we've got um, offices and customers all over the globe, um, thousands and thousands of, of licenses and training certifications that have been delivered um, and, and have a pretty large, uh, I would say, brand recognition uh, in the market, specifically when it comes to uh, mobile forensics, but now uh, computer forensics as well. So let's talk a little bit about um, our our platform before we go into the the specifics on the uh, on the solutions. Um, we can sort of categorize our uh, you know the components of our digital intelligence or endpoint intelligence platform basically in three categories. So we've got access, analyze, and manage, um, and all three are are critical uh, as part of this um, you know as part of this life cycle or ecosystem. So when we're talking about accessing. Um, if you think back to what I just mentioned about keeping up to date with the sort of latest and greatest, you know, whether it's a, a flagship uh, Samsung device that's in the market or a brand new uh, collaboration application, you know, customers need to have a solution that is, um, you know, constantly being updated, that is aware of, you know, the ever changing market and supporting uh, the latest and greatest. Um, once the customer has the ability to access and collect that data, um, they need to have tools to actually make sense of it and actually analyze uh, the data that they have just collected. Um, you know, there, there's really a, a, not a, a lot of um, use if you can collect terabytes and terabytes of, of data, but if you don't have the tools to actually um, you know, manage that or, or make sense of the data you've just collected or analyze it, um, you know, then you just have a mountain of data with, with no way 
no way to actually look at it. Um, and then lastly, managing. Um, so this is managing who has access to the data that you've collected. Um, I like to use the example of a, um, a corporate uh, IT security group. Um, they might have you know, interns um, working with them or, or junior uh, analysts working on their team. Um, you might not want to have the junior analyst have access to you know, the CTO's cell phone or CTO's uh, computer. You know, you might need to set permissions uh, and, and limit the access. So we've got solutions across, you know, th these three categories um, that fit right into, um, you know, where, where these corporate customers need us. So uh, we'll talk about um, corporate investigations um, and some of those use cases, uh, e-discovery and incident response as well. And we'll, we'll focus uh, on these solutions that you see here. So for e-discovery, um, basically the, the ability to collect data from cell phones and computers, um, process it and load it into a review friendly format um, is a large chunk of our, of our customer base on the private sector. Um, they purchase our acquisition processing uh, and analysis tools specifically for um, e-discovery. We'll talk a bit more about that in these different uh, products in a second. Corporate investigations. So we talked about IT security groups that bring this capability in-house. Um, so this would be acquisition analysis um, and sometimes, um, you know, maybe an additional step um, when we talk about like analytics. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that more in a second here. And then lastly, incident response. So um, the ability to um, create uh, an extraction or, or collect an extraction at a at the bit level of a uh, of a mobile device uh, is critical for incident response. Um, we saw a pretty big spike in interest uh, in incident response after the uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, WhatsApp. Um, I guess you'd call it like a phishing link, but basically the the WhatsApp phone hack of, of Bezos. Um, we saw a lot of customers start to think about mobile devices uh, in terms of incident response and, and corporate security. Uh, we'll, we'll get more into, into that in a, in a second here um, when we talk about use cases, but um, going back to kind of Celebrite's global presence, here, here's where our offices and, and employees on the ground are. Um, our headquarters is in Israel, uh, but we've got a large presence you know, globally, as, as you can see here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we, how we're how we're pitching some of these solutions to to our customers. So, typically, when we're talking to um, our service provider customers, um, our customers in the service provider space, so customers that are billing um, their customers hourly in order to do these sorts of um, you know forensic investigations or collections for for e discovery, we we talk a lot about profitability and, and ROI. Um, so when they bring Celebrite capabilities in house, this gives them the ability to say that, yes, they have the gold standard in the market. Um, they are not just purchasing, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the tool that's the cheapest at the moment. You know, they're, they're purchasing the tool that is going to stay consistently um, at the top of the pack. You know, this is the, the gold standard in the market. With the Celebrite solutions. Um, and the, the proper solutions, they're able to be even more efficient. So as we talk about things like detachable licenses um, or network dongles, you know, the ability to um, collaborate and, and be very more uh, efficient amongst their team um, will allow them to in turn either take on more projects um, or uh, you know, in, increase their, their revenue spend overall. Maybe they need to hire uh, less employees because the employees that they have can be more efficient with the Celebrite tools that they have. Uh, and lastly, uh, profitability. So if they can um, cut back on um, their 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 spending um, wherever they can, you know they they will. Um, and so when we speak to them about uh, being more efficient and profitability, um, that's where um, this can really uh, this this can really help them out. It's a little bit different when we're talking about corporate customers. Um, you know, there there's still sort of a, a cost savings discussion around. Um, you know, bringing these capabilities in house versus farming them out to a service provider. That's always something to, to, to bring up. Um, you know, a lot of these corporations, they might be going to, uh, you know, a, a Deloitte or an E and Y and kind of 
farming out the the collections and analysis and there there might be a little bit of pain there of um you know cost but also scheduling uh bringing someone outside of the company can always be a little bit um, hectic for the custodian or for the employee um so there is some benefit um from a cost perspective for the corporation to bring this in house but we, we usually frame these discussions around risk of, about um you know what are what are you doing to make sure that um when a when a uh, you know employee leaves your company, what are you doing to make sure that they are not um, taking IP or taking trade secrets with them when they leave? Um, we have the discussions around you know are you are you looking at this kind of stuff? Do you know what you are are, are potentially um, missing? What's your what's your risk level? Um, it, that's kind of the, the the way that these conversations go with with corporate customers. And, and as I'm sure you guys know, you know you'll have the whole spectrum of of customer sort of um, complexity level. You know, you might have a customer who's brand new and they say that, oh no, we we you know, we don't do anything. We just give them we give them the phone when they leave the company or we we let them keep their laptop or and we don't even look at it. Or you'll have people on the complete other end of the spectrum who already have sort of a, a well established, you know, forensic um, program or, or a uh, you know forensic protocol where they will you know, create a extraction, they will uh, create an image of the laptop, they'll do a kind of a light investigation, and now they just need a little bit, um, you know, additional tools to be more efficient there. So you'll have customers all over that, that, that spectrum there of, of where they are kind of in their, in their DI readiness. Um, and I know we'll have sort of a, a dedicated session as well about, um, or at least a, a section about um, some of the other use cases as well, and how to kind of pitch to those use cases. Um, which can be really, uh, really helpful. Okay, so let's jump into um, some of the specific solutions that we have here. Now, the first one, and probably the one that you guys um, or might be most familiar with or, or hear about the most, is UFED. Uh, so this is Celebrite's extraction tool, um, and then when we're talking about uh, extraction tools, um, and specifically around UFED, this is um, extracting data from mobile devices. And, you know, there's not going to be, there's not going to be a test at the end or anything like that, but you might hear me mention things like logical backup file system and physical. Um, we won't get too far into the weeds here, um, but just so you're aware, there's, there's basically different levels of collection um, that are possible depending on the device that you're collecting. Um, so it's not sort of a one size fits all, like connect it to celebrate, press a button, and then you end up with an exact bit for bit copy. Of that phone, you know, you might have um, a, a security patch on that phone, or, or maybe a specific chip in that phone that prevents us from maybe getting a physical extraction. And maybe the the file system is is the next best thing. Uh, there's a lot of variables at play, but um, just so you're kind of aware, just for some of the terminology that I'll that I'll use, um, just just be aware of some of these uh, some of these terms here. When it comes to actual UFED devices. Uh, we have two that we offer to the uh, to the private sector. Um, so we've got uh, the UFED Touch 2, uh, which is what you see on the left here, um, and the UFED 4 PC. Uh, so the UFED Touch 2 is a uh, tablet version of our UFED software. Um, it's actually a piece of hardware that we uh, that we sell, um, and it's uh, it's it's sort of all kind of self-contained. Uh, in that device, so you've got uh, USB ports on the left side, USB ports on the right. You connect a phone on the left, you connect an external hard drive on the right, and then you just follow sort of the touch screen prompts uh, in order to perform the collection. With the UFED 4 PC, <clears throat> it's a Windows executable uh, that you can um, load on any you know laptop or desktop, um, and then whichever machine has the licensed dongle connected to it is the one that will that will work. Um, you know, regardless of the, um, you know, of the option that you select, um, you're going to end up with the same extraction, um, regardless of if you used a touch to, or you fit for PC, um, it really just comes down to, you know, to, to the customer's preference. And just, just briefly, just cause you guys might see it on the, um, uh, you know, on this, on the pricing sheet or on the sales sheet, um, you'll, you'll hear about, you know, a hardware kit. Um, this is what the, the hardware kit looks like. So. We've got um, all of the you know cables and tips and, and combinations of, of adapters that um, you know that the examiner would need in order to collect uh, these devices. That's what's included in, in this hardware kit. 
Um, also the, um, the, the UFED dongle, uh, all of the UFED device adapters and things like that uh, are included. The only thing that's not included is actually this little picture of the, uh, the UFED camera. Uh, that's a separate, um, uh, basically it's a USB camera that just faces down uh, that allows you to you know, snap pictures of a phone or, or maybe film a video of you uh, extracting a phone. But um, that one's not part of the UFED, um, you know, uh, equi the standard sort of hardware kit. Uh, it's, a, it's an additional, but all the other cable tips and, and things like that are what you would see uh, in the uh, in the hardware kit. So let's see here. Um, I'll I'll just briefly talk about some of the um, some of the some of the recent enhancements that have really kind of um, made waves uh, in the uh, mobile forensic space. Um, now the first and and again uh, we're not going to get too far into the weeds, so don't worry about. Um, Memorizing this stuff, but I think it is helpful to know um, kind of where where Celebrite stands, at least in the in the market, and some of the the recent, or I would say relatively major, um, you know, enhancements we've added recently. But um, one of the first uh, that really kind of shook things up was um, January of 2020 was the addition of uh, Checkmate extractions for iOS devices. Now, basically, what this did was open up um, a lot of capabilities for collecting more data from from iOS devices. Um, prior to this, you either had to have a, a Celebrite, you know, premium or a gray key, um, which which are basically just uh, devices that that law enforcement can purchase uh, in order to get this type of extraction. So to basically to to be able to collect everything that's on that iPhone, you needed to have you needed to be in law enforcement, basically. Um, once we added this checkmate uh, capability uh, into UFED, um, if you had anything from the iPhone 5S, or actually the iPhone 4S, but in, in UFED, the iPhone 5S to the iPhone 10, um, you can now collect the full file system of that iPhone. So we, we had customers now saying, oh my God, I've never seen email collected from an iPhone, or I've never seen uh, Telegram uh, being, being collected here, or I'm collecting so much more data uh, from these phones than, than I was able to before. Um, and now this is, you know, full file systems have kind of become the new, you know, the new gold standard um, when it comes to to iOS collections. I mean, there's still value in doing something like an iTunes backup, uh, but it's just nowhere near as much data uh, as you would get with something like a full file system. So this this was a huge uh, addition into the oh, I hit my back button. A huge uh, addition into UFED. Um, and we're still, you know, adding uh, new uh, capabilities around Checkmate as well. So in the next version, uh, 7.44, we're adding support for um, for 14.4, so the latest version um, of uh, of iOS, um, and even adding something called selective extraction um, and things like um, uh, the ability to uh, basically putting it in a new container to speed up this this level of collection. So. Um, this this was huge uh, all around the you know the iOS market, um, uh, you know. So if you ever hear checkmate, just just uh, just know that's that's what that is. Um, on the uh, on the Android side, um, you know, we're we're constantly adding uh, extraction capabilities into UFED, uh, but one of the the ones that really stood out was something called Qualcomm Live, um, and this was specifically a capability that I think the private sector uh, benefits from. Um, and this is the ability to get a full file system or, or physical extraction of uh, many, many devices with a Qualcomm chipset, um, which is a very large chunk of the market um, out in the, you know, out in the world. Um, now, this requires the passcode to be known, uh, which is typically fine uh, because a lot of the, um, you know, corporate owned devices or, or uh, devices used in, in civil litigation. You'll, you'll typically have the, the pin or at least some sort of, um, you know, consent from the, from the user. Um, and as long as you have that pin, you can capture uh, a full file system or physical extraction of these devices with, with Qualcomm chips. Uh, so again, this opened up a lot of um, potential for, um, for, for sort of deeper level extractions that our customers can now get. And these, these were, you know, free updates to, to UFED that just really kind of turned the, Turn the industry on its head a little bit of like, okay, wow, I can get so much more data, you know, from from these phones now. Uh, when previously I might have just been able to get, you know, a backup or, or a logical collection. Um, 
this is a, a newer a newer feature, uh, but I think this is is pretty fantastic for our customers. Um, in 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 short, um, a lot of these uh, encrypted messaging applications, so things like Telegram and Signal, um, they do a great job at protecting your data and and uh, uh, keeping your data encrypted. Um, so much so that that sometimes they can take and uh, really like put a uh, a damper on the ability to collect and, and decode, um, you know, the, those applications. So what we've done to sort of work around that, um, around these sort of, uh, you know, these these applications that that focus uh, very much on privacy, um, we've added this feature that we call Chat Capture, which which basically allows us to navigate to um, an application that's on that phone. So right right now it's it's WhatsApp and I believe it's Telegram as well. Uh, we're adding Snapchat and, and a few other applications soon, um, but we can navigate to those applications, um, select particular conversations that we want to collect, um, and then UFED will automate a screen grab process um, from that phone. Um, so basically, it's it's almost like a workaround. Instead of collecting the actual application database and decoding it, um, we're able to just grab screen captures and, and grab what the user would see. Um, so this is really uh, opened up capabilities for um, for collecting these really um, challenging applications that a lot of our customers have been sort of frustrated with. Um, and, and when you think back to, you know, um, employees and custodians wanting to use the the latest and greatest apps, um, this is another um, you know tool in the toolbox for someone who's collecting data from these phones. Um, you know, they can use this this screen capture um, if for whatever reason they aren't able to. Uh, capture and decode the actual you know, application database. Again, there's not going to be a, a test at the end of this or anything like that, but I just think these are really uh, helpful features for our customers, and these are things that kind of set us apart from from some of the other um, of the other tools in the market. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about licensing. Um, now, you heard me mention before that sh typically the um, um, the licensing is is done via a USB you know dongle, um, and that's kind of been how Celebrate has licensed itself uh, in the past for for a long time. Um, what we've done fairly recently, well, in the past maybe year and a half or so, um, is add what we call detachable licenses as a uh, as a licensing option or as a as a new product essentially. Um, and what detachable licenses. Uh, R is, is is a shift away from sort of traditional dongle based licenses, um, and with this, the customer purchases uh, a pool of licenses that they can check out as needed electronically. Um, so the customer installs the detachable license application um, on their uh, you know on on a server somewhere or on their own uh, you know on their own network. You know this isn't something that Celebrite is um, um, you know storing for them or or it's not managed through like the community portal or anything like that but um, the customer installs the license manager uh, and then can check in and check out licenses as needed um, so we saw a really big spike in interest during uh, obviously during the pandemic uh, because customers weren't able to travel you know into the lab to to grab their equipment um, and they still needed to be able to run their business you know they still needed to be able to um, ship a license somewhere uh, in order to have that team member, uh, you know, be able to to do their job um, or to perform a a collection. So what you can do with detachable licenses um, is check out that license. Uh, essentially, just email it to to to, to someone else um, on the team or or even a custodian in some cases. You know, if you're going to kind of guide them through um, self collection, um, and they license UFED or physical analyzer. Out on their remote machine via this detachable license, um, they can either uh, return the license to the pool once it's you know once the collection is complete, um, or they can just let the license expire and it, and it gets you know returned back to the pool. Uh, but we've seen a, a, a really big spike in uh, in interest when it comes to detachable licenses. So th this is just kind of something to keep in mind too when you're when you're talking to these customers, um, you know if they have a need for. Um, you know, sort of remote collection or even just, you know, sharing a, a license. Um, if you think back to, um, honestly, both the, those um, cases that we were talking about, like corporate and um, service providers, 
there, there's a pretty good play for for detachable licenses for both. Like for service providers, um, this can cut down significantly on the amount of time it takes for them to um, respond to like a collection request. You know, they can just say, okay, um, you know, if you can install UFED, I can I can get you a license within a matter of minutes instead of saying, okay, um, let me ship a um, you know, a dongle out to you with a, with some equipment, or let me um, put one of my examiners on a plane to to fly out to you, which you know obviously can take uh, you know however long it takes to, to to fly out there. But there's a that's a cost to all that stuff as well, um, and this just makes things so much easier um, and so much quicker. So really, kind of um, you know increases their their efficiency, um, their profitability. Uh, and then for corporate customers as well, just just being able to very very quickly respond to events um, is a uh, is a, re a really big plus for detachable licenses. Um, I, I'll just kind of this is just kind of for your for your information um, about some of the the services that we offer. Um, we won't we won't spend a ton of time here, um, but it is really helpful to to know um, you know when you do talk to customers if they have devices that are locked. Uh, they aren't uh, just kind of stuck and, and um, you know, uh, the, basically we, we can help them is what I'm trying to say. Um, if you do have customers, and you'll see this a lot on the corporate side, but on the service provider side as well, um, you know, they might have employees who left a, um, you know, left the organization, uh, didn't provide their PIN, and there was no uh, mobile device management solution in place that would allow them to, um, you know, remotely unlock uh, the devices. Um, you might have customers who, yeah, they think that that okay, that's this device is basically useless now, um, and I can't do anything about it. Um, that's not the case. Uh, we have labs all over the world um, that can assist uh, in uh, in unlocking devices. Um, so if you do have those cases, or if you, you if you are talking to customers, um, you can uh, kind of guide them and, and tell them that you know just because they have locked devices doesn't mean that they are. Um, you know, kind of out of luck. They can uh, they can basically ship them to our our labs, um, or, you know, around the globe. Um, and depending on the device, um, there's sort of different um, uh, amounts of time that that might take, and, and obviously depending on the complexity of the passcode. But um, that's just I just wanted to kind of plug that, just so you're aware of that capability. Okay, let's jump over to uh, what we call physical analyzer. So. Um, this would fall under the access um, and I, well, I guess, no, you had covered access um, physical analyzer would be under the analyze uh, bucket of, of the um, endpoint intelligence kind of uh, diagram that I showed. So, physical analyzer is going to be the next step in the process when we're talking about mobile devices. So we use a UFED to collect um, the data from the mobile device and then that data goes into physical analyzer. Um, so when you see something like um, UFED 4 PC Ultimate or um, UFED Touch 2 Ultimate, um, that is a combination or a bundling of UFED and Physical Analyzer uh, because you need to have you, you you need to have both. You know, there's there's no really no use in just being able to collect a mobile device and not be be able to look at it or actually do anything with it. Um, so that's why you need something like Physical Analyzer. To actually take that data and it does what we call decoding. Uh, so basically process that data, um, you know, process those ones and zeros, that binary data you've collected from your phone, and it converts it or translates it into actual, you know, human usable um, data. Uh, so this is the tool um, where, you know, customers are using um, to, you know, perform their investigations. You know, this is a mobile forensic tool. Um, a lot of our customers will use this as sort of a, a processing engine where they're sort of process mobile phones and then export out reports or export data out into, um, you know, into a, into a review platform uh, via something like legal view, which we'll, we'll talk about in a 2nd. Um, but a lot of our customers are, uh, you know, sort of familiar with this, or if you're talking to a corporate customer and they um, are utilizing a service provider. Um, if, the, if, if they're receiving reports back, um, the, uh, um, you know, celebrate tools, then the, uh, uh, you know, the corporate customer probably are, is already familiar with, um, seeing, you know, the, the reports and things like that from, um, from celebrate, they, they typically all come from, from physical analyzer. Um, so at its core, 
Physical Analyzer is a mobile forensics tool. Um, that's not to say that our customers, you know, will use it for 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 that for for every case, but um, for every sort of um, artifact that we present, uh, we show exactly where we're finding that on the file system. We allow the the analyst to get um, into the weeds, you know, analyze manually examine you know databases, manually examine um, applications that aren't supported, like. You can really get into the weeds here, get into like the hex view of, of these um, of the data here and, and, and validate your, your findings. Um, but most of our customers, what they want is uh, communications like they're like 95%, I would say, of, the, of, of customers uh, in like the e discovery space. They just want uh, to collect data from from cell phones and export out uh, text messages or export out chat communications um, and that's where they're spending most of their time um, so i always show customers like this bubble view that you see here um, and how similar it is to to what you would see on the source device um, and this always just kind of um i mean it really like blows them away like they're, they're, customers just want bubbles it's it's kind of funny um, but you just show them the bubble view and they are they're ready to buy um, what's nice about this too is that you, you've got your bubble view while you're actually doing your investigations, as I'm kind of scrolling around, I can see the, you know, the back and forth. And if there's attachments that are sent and received, we can see those, you know, in line, similar to what you'd see, you know, on the on the source device. Um, and then when we go to export our data, um, you know, to create a report or export it out via legal view, uh, we can include those bubbles as well, uh, which is a, a really nice benefit of legal view, um, which we'll talk about in a second here. Um, but the reviewers and attorneys that are using relativity, they're also reviewing these, these bubbles. They're not just reviewing a bunch of raw text. Um, so you guys might have, I mean, you guys are talking to the customers all the time. I'm sure, um, you hear like bubble view and, and you know, they, they want it to look like the, the mobile device. Um, there's some capabilities in, in physical analyzer. We, we won't spend a ton of time here, but, um, this is a, a, a investigation tool. So, um, you know, for, for location based analysis um sorry there's someone gardening near me let me uh, close my sorry that should be a little better um so there are tools to sort of visualize um visualize the evidence so uh, here we have the map view so you know location based investigations where um co gps coordinates whether it's you know latin longitude from um exif metadata or um, cell phone towers that we're connected to can be plotted out on a map. Um, not a lot of customers, I would say, um, that that I've spoken with um, do these sort of location-based investigations um, in the private sector. Uh, it does happen, but but uh, not typically a ton. But uh, but just know there there are some capabilities in PA for that. Um, as you look on the left side, um, just just briefly here on the um, in this screenshot under analyze data, um, you'll see there's there's categories for. Um, all different sorts of data from these uh, from these mobile devices, um, and that's kind of the the power of physical analyzer is uh, again taking that um, extraction, taking that that binary dump, and and converting it into these categories and, and very easy to to kind of um, filter down to um, you know areas that you're uh, that you're interested in for your investigation. Um, so the timeline feature. This is uh, I think. Uh, I think it's kind of overlooked, but um, the customers that are actually using it know how how valuable um, and powerful this is. But um, it sounds straightforward, right? Like just uh, this is a timeline of activity uh, or timeline of events uh, that took place on this device. But um, when you really think about it in terms of a mobile device, um, you can get a, a lot of information about um, kind of where someone's where someone's head was, or, or 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 what what exactly they were doing on that on that mobile device. Once you start threading all of those events together, uh, you know it's one thing to to read through all of the text messages, and then it's one thing to kind of look through all the call logs. But when you see them all threaded together, and you get the full picture of activity, you know, and you see that okay, this this text message was received, and then the user. Um, opened up their Safari browser and then searched for, um, you know, how to um, how to uh, uh, you know clear their USB history on their computer, um, and then they made a phone call via WhatsApp. Uh, then we see a couple WhatsApp messages. Then they switch over to Telegram. You know, 
th that that sort of story um, you can really only find um, when you look at something like the timeline view. Um, so when we have customers like corporate customers, um, I like to show them this timeline view and just say, um, you know, when you have a, a, a an employee that leaves the company, um, you know, and, and if, if you're not doing any sort of um, triage or, or quick investigation, you, you know, you really should be. Um, and what you can do is just look at uh, maybe look for a couple keywords, but you can you can kind of filter down to you know maybe the last couple weeks of the person's employment and just take a look and see um, you know what was going on on that device. Um, you know was there any kind of suspicious application activity? Was this person uploading um, you know uh, photos that they were taking, or were they kind of um, you know downloading cloud storage applications and then uploading um, data to their private cloud? Like you can get a lot of information just just from looking at this you know at this timeline view here. Um, this falls a little bit more under the um, uh, you know incident response type type case or or information security. Um, we do have a, a built-in malware scanner in Physical Analyzer. Um, this is a, a bit of a more I would say more like a reactive solution where where you need to have a dump of the phone um, and then you can um, scan it uh, for uh, basically for malware via uh, Bit Defender definitions. Um, bit more of a of a reactive approach than a proactive, but um, but it is a, a, certainly a capability that, that folks are interested in is the ability to, to double the phone and, and scan it for malware. So this, this next one is, is huge um, and, uh, and we'll kind of speed up a little bit after this, but I think this is something that um, might have slipped under the radar for, for a lot of these customers, um, but is a huge um, tool that, that customers should be using. And this is what we call media classification. So this would allow a um, an analyst to process the phone that they've collected. They can define what categories of pictures and videos they're interested in, um, and then the tool will um, process and, and, and break out those pieces of media into these categories. So you'll see a lot of them here. So things like credit cards, documents, IDs, screenshots. Um, these can be really, really valuable for, for our customers to look at. Um, right now, or if, if customers aren't using a feature like this, um, there's not a lot of sort of smart analysis capabilities that they have for looking through media. Um, they have to basically scroll through um, all of the pictures and videos and, and, you know, click through and kind of maybe find what they're looking for. Um, but with a tool like this, with, with something like media classification, they can just review the the, the small subset of, of data and just say, okay, there's, you know, 80 pictures, 86 pictures of documents. I'm just going to review those pictures of documents to see if, um, you know, if this user was snapping a picture of their, you know, computer screen or snapping a picture of, uh, you know, customer lists and things like that. Like this is a huge uh, addition for for physical analyzer that I think a lot of customers, um, they, I mean, they should be using. Uh, I just don't know um, if they uh, if they read our release notes all the time. Um, but there's there's some really powerful tools um, that have just been added into physical analyzer. This was a you know a free update to, to PA. Um, we won't spend a ton of time here, but again, this goes back to being able to present the data um, in a in a way that's similar to what you can see on the source device. Um, so we've got a uh, basically a virtual um, Android device um, that can load up uh, APKs from the extraction and then present the data. Very, very similar to what you'd see on the source device. So kind of beyond just the bubble view, but presents it in the same way, like WhatsApp, for example, like an older version of, of WhatsApp. Um, you know, this really holds a lot of weight when you're um, trying to show what the user would have seen on their end. You know, if we're able to present it um, on an emulated device and say, you know, here's exactly what the person said, um, you know, and here's what it looks like on their device. I mean, that's that, that, holds, a, that holds a lot of weight. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, you know physical analyzer. So again, so the ability to decode um, data from mobile devices and export that out um, is, is is a sort of a primary use case for uh, for a lot of our customers. Um, now, a lot of our customers, the 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 reason that they are exporting data out of physical analyzer is for e discovery. Uh, you know, for ingestion into into the e-discovery process. So basically, ingestion into relativity is is the end goal. 
Um, and that has been a, a challenge um, historically for, for customers to do. Um, the formats kind of before we added this legal view add-on or created this legal view add-on, um, the, the formats uh, for our reports and for our exports um, really didn't play nicely with, uh, with a tool like Relativity. Um, you know, in read, or, uh, loading a, a spreadsheet and reviewing a spreadsheet um, within something like Relativity, like a spreadsheet of text messages um, would be sort of a nightmare um, for, for an attorney uh, on the other end. Um, so what customers did, uh, what typically what the service provider customers did is create their own scripts and um, their own kind of custom tools to convert data from physical analyzer, um, like a, basically convert a spreadsheet from physical analyzer, convert it into a load file. Um, some customers had more success than others, but there was a lot of just pain overall of, you know, maintaining tools and, you know, um, um, actually uh, threading data together was, was a challenge for them. So but basically it was a, it was a huge pain um, for, for everyone, uh, you know, involved um, until we came out with, with legal view. Um, so when we uh, created legal view, we got rid of the, um, the work that the service provider customers had to do in order to kind of convert that output from physical analyzer to, to the load file. Um, we just said, Hey, we're going to add that capability right into physical analyzer. So we'll give you the ability to export to a load file, or we'll give you the ability to export to relativity's short message format. Um, and we have a partnership, you know, with, with relativity. So we work very closely with them. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, at this point now, just monthly calls. Um, kind of letting them know what our customers are seeing. They're letting us know what's kind of coming down the pike. Um, and we have this kind of ongoing discussion with them, with, you know, the market leader um, when it comes to uh, e-discovery review. Um, so this was, uh, you know, a, a huge um, uh, benefit to our, to our customers. Um, and again, this goes back to the, the bubble views uh, as well. Honestly, just being able to export out these bubbles um, directly from physical analyzer. Uh, these chat bubbles uh, was was huge for our customers. Um, that's not something that they were were able to do in some of these uh, you know scripts that they had written. So, um, LegalView is a uh, an add-on for Physical Analyzer. So, um, this wasn't like a free update for for PA. Um, you you need to add it to your existing you know Physical Analyzer license uh, in order to be able to to do these sorts of exports. All right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, cloud data. Um, so we've talked so far about um, data that's been stored locally, you know, on your mobile device, uh, and being able to analyze that and export that out via via Legal View. But what do we do about data that does not uh, exist on your mobile device uh, that's stored elsewhere? Um, you know, maybe it's a, a an iCloud backup or um, you know. I always use the example of, of Facebook, like when you've got the Facebook application on your mobile device, you don't have, you know, a cached copy of everything that's in your profile, you know, all of your posts and pictures and messages, like that's not just cached on your mobile device at all times. Um, you know, as you're using the application, as you're kind of scrolling through, it's, it's caching or it's pulling down information. Um, as you're scrolling down, it's pulling down more information. Um, so you don't have an exact copy of your account at, at all times. You, you need to be able to ping Facebook and pull down that information from, you know, from Facebook, for example. Um, that's where something like UFED Cloud comes in. Um, so we offer what we call consent-based collection uh, via UFED Cloud. Uh, and what that means is um, the ability to use the username and password uh, for the account in order to pull down things like um, email or um, social media, so like LinkedIn or, or Instagram or Facebook, um, or uh, iCloud backups are, are a very popular um, uh, source uh, that, that are supported. Um, so that's the the version that we uh, currently offer. So we call it consent based or, or username and password based uh, extractions, which typically for our customers. Um, that's not a, a, a problem. Um, usually they have the, um, you know, if someone is involved in some sort of civil litigation, they might have their attorney telling them that they need to provide their username and password uh, in order to collect. Um, we see, I would say less 
Um, this is a little bit less common on like the corporate side. We do have some interest on the corporate side for sure, but um, it does get a little bit tricky when, um, you know, kind of distinguishing between company issued device and a personal account that has been logged into on that company issued device. So typically you can collect what's on the device, but you might not have the, uh, you know, the consent of the user in order to, you know, pull down a copy of their, 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 their uh, Dropbox account, for example. Um, just so, so you all are aware, and you might have already um, heard of cloud, you fed cloud, we used to actually call it cloud analyzer. Um, and it, you, it used to be a completely separate install and a separate UI and, and the reports were different and it, 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 it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too great. Um, we've now uh, added a lot of those, basically added those capabilities into the physical analyzer UI as like an additional module for physical analyzer. Now you can still use it standalone. Um, it'll it'll look very similarly to physical analyzer. It just won't have all of the the mobile forensics capabilities. But it's really nice that, that we now have the same UI, so a customer doesn't have to learn you know a brand new tool um, or install a completely separate tool. They can use it um, and, and it functions and, and sort of performs the same as something like physical analyzer. Um, and that means that our reports are now in line as well. So if I, um, you know, create a report of um, someone's Slack uh, data that I've collected via UFED Cloud, um, it's going to present it in that same again bubble view, um, uh, and it's going to be kind of consistent uh, across, uh, you know, across tools and across platforms, uh, which is which is a really nice uh, addition. Uh, this is just sort of a, uh, you know, just a screen grab of some of the sources that we support, but. I think in general, um, when you think of UFED Cloud, just think of things like email, uh, social media, and um, and cloud storage accounts. Um, so things like Dropbox and, and Box.com and things like that. Okay, let's talk about Pathfinder. So Pathfinder is um, is an investigative solution that we offer. Um, that allows for multiple devices, um, either within the same case or uh, across cases in some cases, um, to be analyzed uh, sort of en masse, you know, to be able to find um, keywords across all of the devices in your, in your case or to um, look for particular types of media across all devices or even things like finding connections between all the devices, like who are, who are these um, you know, three custodians all communicating with. Um, that's where Pathfinder, uh, you know, really shines. It's, it's in the ability to analyze mass amounts of data. Um, if you think about analysis in um, physical analyzer, it's very much like a one device at a time sort of deep dive. Um, on, on the Pathfinder side, um, it's geared towards, uh, again, mass amounts of data, lots of different phones um, and extractions loaded up into the, into the system. Um, we'll talk a bit about some of the capabilities here for the, for the Pathfinder system. Um, so again, similarly to physical analyzer, um, you do have the ability to categorize, you know, media, um, that's in the Pathfinder system. Um, you do have sort of some, uh, benefits, uh, outside of what you would get with something like physical analyzer. Um, so the ability to, um, utilize your, you know, Pathfinder hardware, because this is actually deployed on a, on a server. Um, as opposed to the other desktop applications that we discussed, um, Pathfinder is actually deployed on a server. It can be accessed via a browser, um, which also adds sort of a, a layer of um, value to our customers. You know, the ability to just log into a system via a browser um, instead of having to install, um, you know, a desktop application and, and, and you know, for, for each user that needs to use the system. Uh, is huge. All they need to use is something like Chrome, uh, and they can take a look at you know mobile data. Oops, hit my mouse here. Please. Got one of those click wheels that just keeps spinning. Okay, so um, using the uh, Pathfinder hardware again, depending on how um, you've deployed the system, you know you can have a system for uh, single users for a handful of users or everyone in the organization can have a, a license. You know, we have complete sort of flexibility around, you know, licensing Pathfinder. Um, 
But that's why you would use a, a system like Pathfinder for media classification as opposed to something like physical analyzer uh, is the ability to use that beefy um, you know, server hardware to process these phones. You've got some additional capabilities beyond that though, but um, you know, the ability to find similar faces um, is something that you see in Pathfinder, but not uh, physical analyzer, for example. Um, you know, users of this system can upload you know, an image and say, all right, find all of the pictures of that person um, you know, in these phones, you know, where else does this person show up both in pictures and, you know, and videos, um, which is, uh, you know, very, very uh, powerful, certainly on the law enforcement side, um, you know, to be able to, uh, to do something like that. The ability to look for similar images um, is, is powerful as well. So if we can say, all right, find all of the, it doesn't have to be an exact copy of this image, um, you know, whether that, you know, the, the person put some kind of filter on it or resized it or, or, or whatever, we can say, find all of the similar images. Um, and we'll see here in this, in this example, um, we've got a picture of Madison Square Garden um, and another picture just taken at a different angle. Uh, obviously not the same picture in, 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 uh, you know, at all, but um, the system says, hey, you know, we think that these are similar images. You should, you should take a look here. Um, and this is really powerful. Um, you know, this allows for that sort of like fuzzy, um, you know, matching, obviously, it's easy to just find a, a, an exact match via like a hash value, but um, when it comes to finding similar images, um, that, that can be very tricky. Um, and, and, you know, this, this, this tool does it uh, quite, quite well. Um, OCR is a, is a capability that I think our customers uh, specifically um, uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, on the private sector side is the ability to OCR images and pull out, you know, text from screenshots and documents and then make all of that data searchable. Um, so I could run keyword searches um, and then be getting hits on images on these devices uh, or images from, uh, we can load up, you know, EO1 uh, images as well. Um, but uh, but that's, that's, that's powerful. Not only am I searching, you know, keywords across text messages or, or, or iMessages and things like that, but I can search for, you know, screenshots of previous messages and, and find content in those uh, screenshots or pictures of, of documents, uh, which is which is pretty huge. I would say really where this tool shines and, and where a lot of um, you know the reason why a lot of customers purchase this system is for this feature that you're seeing here, this connections analysis or link analysis or what we call our graph view. Uh, we kind of use them all sort of interchangeably, but um, this is where you see the connections um, across your device owners in your case. Um, so this is where we can see. Um, you know, our vendor and myself talking, and you might run a filter and say, you know, who, who are our vendor and Eric both communicating with? And you'll see that, oh, they're actually, you know, Tim is, is a person that is, um, sort of maybe outside of the scope of our case, or we're, we weren't even looking at, at Tim, but we see that within the last couple of weeks, you know, both of them started communicating with Tim, you know, maybe this is a person that we, that we start looking into, um, you'll, you'll, you'll start to see these sort of connections that. Um, you, you would not really have picked up on if you were just doing this analysis in something like physical analyzer, you know, uh, with, you, you kind of have to get lucky and notice kind of notice a pattern in physical analyzer, but this automates that process for you. Um, and you'll see here, you know, the, the numbers kind of connecting the, the individuals here. Um, those are the number of events, um, that we, that we have. So an event can be anything from a, a you know, a phone call to a. A um, you know text message or an email that's sent or received, um, and the user just needs to click on that number, and they'll see all of the um, uh, you know all of the events uh, threaded together there. So so if myself and our vendor are communicating via WhatsApp, um, and then we also have um, you know some phone calls that are made, and, and maybe I send them an email, all of that all of that contact will be threaded together. So I just as an examiner, sorry as an analyst, I'm just I'm just scrolling through and I'm reading through a conversation. As if I was reading through, you know, a single conversation of like an iMessage, um, and it makes it very, very easy to follow along in conversations, um, even if, um, you know, the the custodians or the you know suspects in the case are you know actively trying to switch between applications to cover their tracks and things like that. Um, this makes it very, very easy to to, to follow along there. 
So similarly to what we talked about in physical analyzer, you know, plotting out um, metadata, um, plotting out um, lat longitude locations from the extractions. Um, you'll see that in uh, Pathfinder as well. Um, but the benefit here, again, when we think about multiple devices in a case, that's where this becomes uh, very powerful. You know, when we can see where are all of these, um, uh, you know, all of these device owners, where have they all been? You know, have they been meeting together? Um, are they all visiting the same locations? Um, you'll see different, um, you know, colors plotted out on the map for different, um, you know, device owners in the case. Um, we can see people's, you know, movement across time um, and see if the people ever crossed paths and met at a certain location. You know, you basically just think about location data, but in the context of, you know, multiple devices and finding those, finding those commonalities uh, across those devices. And we won't spend a ton of time on this, but basically the, the way that we are able to, to do this, um, are able to um, thread all of these conversations together or make these connections between people is through what we call uh, person analysis. Um, we do it through uh, device uh, or, or personal identifiers. Um, so when we capture or when, it, when we extract someone's device, you know, we, we have um, a ton of information about that specific person, all of the accounts that that person is logged in as, you know, their, their phone number, their um, email address, their IMEI for their phone, you know, their WhatsApp user address, their, their LinkedIn um, username. We, we, we know that because they're logged in, we can assign those back to this particular person. So then we know whenever we see this LinkedIn uh, username pop up, um, we know that that ties back to Joseph, um, you know, and so whenever we see that pop up, we can say that this is Joseph communicating with uh, with Eric via via LinkedIn because of his device identifier. And as we kind of go throughout our case, if we start learning more and more about some of these individuals, we can manually add these device identifiers as, as well, or these you know these these person identifiers, um, sort of reprocess and just say, all right, now find the new connections. Now that we know that this person also uses this email address, or they also um, maybe they have a burner phone and they, they, they use this, um, additional phone number. We can say, okay, now that we know that let's go ahead and, and look for some, some new connections. Um, now that we've, we've learned a little bit more. So, um, it's kind of an ever changing, um, you know, graph that you can, uh, that you can do it. It gets more powerful, the more information uh, that you learn and that you, you know, that you feed to it. Um, we'll talk briefly about commander just, just so you're aware of it. Um, yeah, we've got some time. Um, just so you're aware of it, um, there is a solution um, that Celebrite offers, and this falls under that management um, bucket uh, that we were discussing. Um, Celebrite has a, a tool called Commander that allows you to, um, you know, govern or, or manage your your fleet of of UFED uh, devices or, or physical analyzer devices, or basically it allows you to see. Um, the different, um, you know, levels of activity um, that that um, that that UFED device is performing, you know, so if I wanted to sort of get a business um, overview or, or get some business insight into um, how many extractions are we performing as a team or, um, you know, where uh, in the, you know, in the globe, are we doing more, um, you know, Android collections versus iOS, um, you know, we, we can get that sort of insight into 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 the operation via something like commander um, so this just allows you to see you know who's using the devices uh, allows you to uh, apply permissions you know if you wanted to limit someone's access on a ufed device or on a physical analyzer device you can do that um, or push out policies to make sure that um, you know folks on the team are lining up with the standard operating procedure of the group um, and it gives you that sort of you know, level of permissioning um, we can also see exactly, you know, information around um, what device uh, has been collected, the date and time. Uh, so this falls under sort of like chain of custody uh, and allows us to um, validate that, you know, we, we've got this additional record of, of chain of custody and exactly, you know, when this extraction was performed. Um, and most importantly, I would say, or, or usually why customers are, are interested in this um, is for the ability to push out updates or force users to update, you know, their, their UFED or, or physical analyzer. This um, allows them to make sure that, 
their team is using, you know, the most up-to-date version of UFED. Um, they can prevent users from, you know, using old versions and potentially opening them up to to more risk or opening them up to, you know, issues down the road because maybe they um, performed kind of a, uh, you know, an older um, exploit or an older type of extraction when they could have updated to the new version and collected more data from these devices. So this allows them to stay on top of, you know, who's who's cur currently up to date on their on their UFED uh, and see some insight into the uh, into like the licensing as well, which is which is useful. Um, and I guess the what I'll kind of close with, um, just um, just so you're aware, um, and we won't go into like all all of the courses and things like that, but just just so you're aware, for all of our solutions, both you know mobile and computers, um, we do have training um, for for all of our solutions. So. We've got training from basic sort of beginner courses um, like CMFF or the, the uh, CMFF is the um, Mobile Forensic Foundations course. We've got the uh, BFI, like the uh, Basic Forensic Computer Investigations course um, through you know media uh, like intermediate to advanced level courses. Um, the the one that I would say, or I mean, there's many courses that are that are valuable, but the, there's a course specifically geared towards the private sector. Um, that's a new addition. It's called the CCI. Um, that's Celebrite or Certified Corporate Investigator, I believe. Um, and that is a, I personally, uh, I, I think it's a fantastic course because it covers the um, extraction capability. So a lot of the things that we talked about today, like um, how to use UFED, why you would choose one extraction type versus the other. Um, and then it covers um, some of the, the capabilities of physical analyzer and legal view. Um, and then it also covers like fundamentals as well. Like here's what e-discovery is. Here's um, some of the cases where you'll need to, to, to um, you know, investigate an employee's phone for IP theft. Um, it's, it's specifically geared toward uh, private sector customers. And that's a new um, offering that we, uh, that we have. Um, we have, you know, multiple different ways that we deliver courses as well, as, as I'm sure you guys know. Um, we are getting back into some of the, you know, instructor-led courses now that we're kind of on the, hopefully on the tail end of this, uh, this pandemic. Um, we saw, you know, a lot of customers interested in like the online on-demand or, or live online courses. Uh, and we'll still have those obviously moving forward as well. Um, but now we'll, we'll be getting back into being able to offer you know, live um, in-person courses, live um, virtual courses, and also just, you know, on-demand self-paced uh, courses as well. Um, I know I threw a ton of information at you guys, uh, but I hope that, um, you know, I hope that this was, uh, that this was helpful for you. Um, kind of pausing here, you know, any questions about, you know, anything that I've discussed or um, could be, yeah, any, any, really anything, this is, this is your time. Um, now to, to you know ask any questions that you might want. Um, can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hopefully, I haven't been talking to myself. I think they've been. No, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like there are any questions, Eric. All right. Um, yeah, our, our vendor, any, any questions or anything you wanted to, to add? Just first of all, I would love to say thank you very much, Eric, for um, this wonderful presentation. It's being recorded. Eric will send the link out and then I'll get it out to all the partners today. Um, just want to reiterate what I said in the beginning is that we do have the UFED renewal promotion. So any customer who has an existing UFED who renews for three years, they will get a license of inspector and digital collector for free. Plus, we're throwing in um, on-demand training for inspector and digital collector in that. It's a very good deal. Expires on the 25th of June. You know who your customers are. <clears throat> you know which ones um, are due to renew. Uh, this quarter, quarter, please speak to them, discuss this, and then register your deal with your sales manager. Also, we're extending the promotion from Q1 that we had, which was buy a new UFED and get inspector, formerly known as Blacklight, for free for a year. And uh, this promotion expires 25th of June. So that's a 
quite a quite a good one too. So please refer back to your pipeline, see where you've got new threads, and please reach out to your end users. We are, we don't want to wait till June. We want to close these to have a good close on April and May. So please get started on that. And first partner and in international to close five units of any of the above deals that we have, we will give you a partner spotlight post on our celebrate social media. Um, which is a range of different channels that we have. So that's very good exposure for your partner business. And any questions, please come back to me um, or Eric, um, who's one of our technical solution consultants. And also we have Tim Thorne as well, that's available to answer your questions as well. So a very good team that we have at your disposal to help you further in, in what you do in promoting yeah. our enterprise solutions within your regions. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time and for joining. Wish you well and look forward to speaking to you soon.